put the title in the form of lots of questions because this is a subject which always gets lots of questions, so I might as well anticipate that. So, building a conscious robot, why, how, and why now? Uh, I can't really answer all these in 12 minutes, but let's have a go. Okay, let's do the why. Um, but basically, we'd like to understand ourselves as well as understanding other people, and what that means, essentially, is understanding consciousness. So, how can we understand consciousness? Well, uh, people have tried lots of ways. Philosophy, we've had a couple of thousand years of that. Psychoanalysis, we've had a hundred years of that. Drugs, very popular, but not necessarily for the reason I'm uh, mentioning here. Um, meditation, um, well, some people claim that, yes, you get there. Uh, and if you do what they do, you'll get to the same place. But whether it involves understanding consciousness, I don't know. It's certainly not anything that can be communicated. Religion, I won't say anything about that. <laughs> um, mysti <coughs> mysticism, very interesting. Brain scanning, this is the modern craze. We now have a machine you can put people in and see what's happening in their brains. We don't actually know what what's happening in their brains means, but uh, we can do something about it. But of course, the real answer is none of the above. In fact, what we should do is take advice from uh, a bongo player. Uh, not just any bongo player. This is the, the great Nobel Prize winning physicist, Richard Feynman, um, who died uh, a decade or so ago. And when he died, what they found written on the blackboard in his workroom was this, what I cannot create I do not understand. And that's the message. So, let's just create consciousness and then we will understand it. Well, how? Well, we're all materialists, I hope. Um, so we all know we're just machines. And since we're the living proof that machines can be conscious, why don't we just build a conscious machine? Then, according to Feynman, we'll understand consciousness. Well, that's the simple plan, but really, how? Well, let's start with the body. Um, most what we call humanoid robots, you've seen the pictures of Asimo and so on, they look a bit like humans on the outside, inside they're pure robot. Uh, now what we do know is since we're conscious that if we copy what we're like, then maybe we'll get somewhere, at least it works on the sympathetic magic level. So what happens if you build a robot that's like a human on the inside? Well, the first thing you find is that uh, it's a fascinating thing to look at. I don't need the sound, by the way, and the video is not... Uh... Julian? Oh, right, it's working up there, fine. Okay, what you see there, and I'm sorry, I'll have to turn round now, is uh, we've built it a skeleton, we built it uh, from Gray's Anatomy, we're particularly proud of the right shoulder. Um, <coughs> all the bones are there, we, we gave it one big eye for reasons I won't go uh, into. Uh, <coughs> And since uh, you like the Michael Jackson touch, I hope. No, the, the most important thing about this robot is that we've copied your anatomy and also we drive it with things like muscles. Basically, you will see all the bungee cords. That's just like your muscles and the electric motors pull on them. And the first thing you discover is that something like that is very, very difficult to control. We have a very complicated body. We have particularly good hands. We can be proud of our hands. Um, and it takes a lot of brain power to control that. And that may have been one of the things that drove us towards consciousness. Interestingly enough, um, well, I shouldn't talk about eating octopus, really, but it turns out that octopuses are the only invertebrate that it looks like may be conscious, and they have the most complicated bodies. So there's something uh, superficial in that anyway. So, um, so we built a robot. That was our starting point. But what's the real nuts of this? Well, OK. We know something about you from our studies. Close your eyes, please, and imagine you're transported from Islington to a beach in the Caribbean. And imagine yourself walking along that nice meet place where the sand meets the sea, there are palm trees and so on and whatever. OK, back to Islington. Open your eyes. Because uh, what we know is that you have an inner world. You can conjure it up. Any time you can conjure up experiences. There's always a you in this world, and there's always a world. And probably the most spectacular insight into this world is when you dream. But in certain states of mind, um, this imagined world can seem as real as the real world. 
uh, with drugs, with certain diseases, uh, and with certain forms of meditation. But there's a twist to all this, and it's this. The real world is just as fake as the imagined world, and your real self is just as fake as this imagined self. They're both just models. You're not conscious. What's conscious is your brain's model of you. And the real world you see is not real. It's your brain's model of the real world. Don't worry, you'll soon get used to the idea. <laughs> and, uh, I understand the bar is open in the interval. <laughs> OK, off we go. Let's get started. So what we have to do in our quest is equip our robot with a model of itself and a model of the world. How? Well, another bit of the title. Why now? Why now? Because it's the age of computers. We finally have a way to create these internal models in a robot. And we can look at them. We can spy on what's going on, which we can't do with other people. And we can see the model of the robot looking at its model of the world. And we can see what it sees or imagines. And we'll just show a brief and not very uh, fast-moving video here of some research we did. Uh, this was imagination in the robot. It's a little bit slow, uh, but what you will see is a split screen. That's the real robot on the left, and on the right is its internal model, and the little square there, you can see what the robot in the internal model is seeing in its view of the real world. And you can see that everything's been transformed into something much simpler, and that's certainly what's happening when we look at the real world. What's out there is not what we see. It's much more than that. And uh, what you're seeing here is the robot is trying to find a way to knock the red thing down. So it finds one, and then it simply downloads it to the body. The body's not conscious at all. OK, so there you see it's a very quick uh, look. But we can do these technologies. So moving on, we now have some much better robots with much better internal models. Uh, these are the latest versions. You will see now we have lots more bones, lots more complicated, and it can move around. Uh, we're contemplating trying to get the money to put legs on it. That's going to be, <coughs> that's going to be an expensive business. Um, and on the right there, you see the latest version of the, uh, of the model. Now, this is interesting. Uh, it takes a lot of computer power to drive that. Um, but uh, computer power increases, doubles every 18 months. Um, at the moment, we run this on quite a big computer in... Uh, 10 years' time, you'll be able to run it on your iPhone. And if going down this path does take us to consciousness, then we have some interesting prospects ahead of us. You all remember those stickers on your computer that said Intel inside? We're waiting for the sticker that says consciousness inside. Uh, and it may be on your iPhone. So look, something to look forward to. I can promise you one thing, it won't be cheap. <laughs> So, what's the plan? Well, we don't think there's anything special about consciousness. Uh, we, we humans make a fuss about things. We think it's all blown up. And so what we're going to do, instead of consulting the philosophers, is we're just going to keep on adding features to this type of robot, and we're going to see where we end up. Language is very, very important uh, to uh, our experience of our consciousness. Um, speech is useful. Silent speech, this is what we call the inner voice. Everybody here has an inner voice, and probably your inner voices are currently saying to you now, what is this guy on about? Okay, but we use language that's very, very close to us. Motivations, well, <clears throat> of course, uh, people do have motivations. They're often not what their parents want them to have, but never mind about that. But we, we'll add these things bit by bit, and all the time we'll be able to peep into its inner world to see and hear what it's thinking. So when's this going to happen? Well, we don't know. Um, there's an awful lot of very interesting and very difficult work involved. Uh, but I will say this. If you're under 30, my advice is to get ready for the conscious robot that you'll meet one day. Thank you very much.